Hey guys, there was a great suggestion in my last video in the comment section where they recommended doing how we're doing Babel and how we're building it in a slightly different way and I really liked it. So we're gonna go into that real quick and then we're gonna start our uh, journey with Docker and get our Node.js server set up with Docker. So here's how we were doing Babel before. If we come look at our package.json where you ended up using this runtime and we're using preset env and stage three. Um, as if we click on our Babel RC, we can see these things are getting run when we do npm run build. But this is actually not necessary or we can actually specify which environment uh, we wanna target. And the environment we wanna target is actually a specific version of Node. Since we're not running this in the browser, there's no need for us to um, basically simplify or transform the code more than it needs to. Because I forgot how many features we're currently on uh, Node 9.3. So I went ahead and installed that and there's a lot of features. It's getting very close to Babel. It's gonna be a, uh, very soon where we don't even need Babel at all because Node.js just supports all the features. Um, but we can actually tell Babel to transform the code so it works in 9.3 and that's what we're going to do and that just transforms less code and transforming less code is good because it just leaves more room for uh, l less room for error which is always good so I went ahead and upgraded my Node.js to 9.3 I went ahead and using the latest stuff um, the there's 8.9 is also still available for the uh, stable but uh, I don't mind using 9.3 and getting the latest stuff. Um, but up to you which one you want to use there. And a new version might even be out by the time you're watching this. But anyway, so I have that installed. So if I just type no-v, we can see, oh, and I'm actually on 9.2. I thought I was using uh, uh, 9.3. Uh, and let me just close my terminal window and reopen. There we go. NVM, and I'm just going to do no dash V. NVM use 9.3. Okay. There we go. Okay, now I'm on 9.3. So if you don't know what NVM is, it's uh, called Node Version Manager. So right there, you just saw me switch from 9.2 to 9.3, and now my node is 9.3, and that's what I'll be using. So I recommend upgrading uh, if you if you'd like to, and uh, use NVM because it makes it really easy tra to transition between different versions. Okay, so now that I have that set up, what I'd like to do is over here in our dot babel RC. So we're using this inf preset over here. What we can do is we can actually target what type of uh, node we want. So I'm going to copy you and paste this in here. And I'm actually gonna get rid of, we don't need our runtime plugin anymore now that we're targeting a specific node version that's high enough. So we're gonna do, and we're actually gonna do 9.2 here. And the reason for that is uh, Docker does not have 9.3 yet. But even though my node version is 9.3, targeting 9.2 still works. Um, and we could also do the other way, have it target 9.3 and Docker be a little bit off. But either way, it should work. And maybe by the time you're watching this, Docker 9.3 is out too, and you can try that. So anyway, so switching that this over, now we're, we're using uh, node 9.2. And if I do npm start, um, it's going to transpile using that. And we should get an error with this. Um, oh, okay, I couldn't get that. And we have it installed right here, Babel preset env. I'm pretty sure, yep, it has it right here. So I'm guessing it's having a problem with, I just upgraded to uh, node nine. So the best thing to do when you change node versions to, is to actually just kill your node modules. So I'm gonna do that and just call, do npm install and have it install everything to make sure I have uh, everything up to date. 
and I did try this before and uh, I believe what will happen is we'll have a problem with uh, bcrypt and we're gonna have to rebuild that guy as well and when I am using 9.3 I was actually using an old version of npm before I was using uh, below 4 and the reason for that is if you've heard of Expo, it's a React Native, um, uh, kind of a spin-off from React Native where it just, it's Create React Native app uses it and it allows you to basically add some features to your development environment, which is pretty nice. But anyway, they only use NPM uh, less than five, I believe NPM four, because they had a bug with it. I don't know if that's fixed yet. I need to look into that. But now that I'm using NPM five, or whether I just uh, did NVM and switched to NPM 6, or Node 9, I mean, uh, my NPM uh, improved or upgraded. So I think I'm on 5.6. Let's see, NPM-V, we can see, okay, I'm on 5.51, so that's above. So we should see, um, also, I get a package.json, a, uh, a lock file for that. All right, but anyway, when this is done and it gets running, we're gonna see a new error, and that is with uh, object spreading. So what we're gonna have to do is install a plugin for that. And if you remember, that's why we installed stage three. I'm not really sure if it's better to uh, add another preset or to just add a plugin for this transform object. I'm thinking this is better because this is specific to just this um, object spread. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with this over using uh, stage three. So we're gonna install this guy like so. And let's see how far we're almost, oh, it looks like it's just about done. And uh, you can notice we're getting some bcrypt. Looks like we're rebuilding that, that's good. Um, all right, cool, that's started. So I'm gonna do npm start. I'm hoping this will crash now. Hopefully crashes on uh, Babel node now. Let's see. Yep, see how it says it can't find the dot 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 operators. All right, so I'm gonna paste this in, install that plugin, and how they recommend adding that is in our Babel RC. We're just gonna copy this. And then we're gonna come over here to our Babel RC, comma, paste it in. And now that'll transform for us. And now the nice thing about this, and now that we use 9.2, is I can actually uninstall Babel plugin transform runtime, um, and also, and we can close that, and also uh, one of the tendencies over here, Babel runtime, we can actually totally get rid of. Okay, so, and if you have trouble with bcrypt, make sure to run uh, npm rebuild like this, so. All right, let's do npm start, oops, and see if everything starts up good. So now we're pointing it to using uh, node 9.2. So when I build it, I can use node and cool, this starts up. So I'm just gonna do yarn remove Babel runtime and also the plugin here, transform runtime, because we no longer need those. It's always good to get rid of dependencies you don't need. And now we can go ahead and run npm run build on this and uh, use our latest version of node when this is done installing. And then after we get that set up, we're gonna start using Docker. And uh, I wanted to show you guys, so here is all the versions of Docker that we can choose from, or not versions of Docker, but the versions of Node.js that we can install using Docker. So you can see the latest they have is 9.2.1 and we can get this version by saying 9.2 or 9 or latest um, in our Docker file, which we're gonna create in a second. Um, so if we come over to our server, we can create a new file called Docker file. Okay, but we'll do that in one moment. Finish installing, we'll do npm run build. And You'll notice a lot changes um, over here in our dist. If we just take a look, and actually let's just do npm run serve and make sure that does work. 
and we don't get any weird errors or anything. Cool, it does start up. So nice, so we are able to eliminate uh, one dependency there, Babel runtime by targeting a node. Cool, so you'll also notice a lot of this code is a lot more readable because it didn't have to transform the code as much. So that's really nice. So, but let's start on doc Docker now. So what I wanna do in this video is just get the uh, server started. So here we're gonna say from and say what version of node. So we saw over here the versions we can choose from all the way here. And uh, this could be updated if more versions of node come out. So I'm gonna say 9.2 and we're gonna say node and then, so you, this is the name of the uh, package or image and then here is the specific. So I'm gonna say 9.2. I could also just say nine and that'll give us, uh, as it upgrades, it should change. And then here I'm gonna specify a working directory slash app and then I'm gonna copy over um, package lock json uh, you normally just need to do package.json but if you have a lock file you want to copy over both and then here we're going to do uh, copy or not copy run npm install to install all the dependencies and uh, we're actually going to get an error with npm install and i'll show you guys that in a second um, so npm install and then what do we want to do after that so once we install everything, we want to copy over um, dist. So that's our built. This is the code that we actually want to run. We copy it over into that, and then we can just do command, and we're going to run node and index.js. Now remember, it doesn't copy over the folder itself. So when we copy um, all these things into the current directory, I don't have to do dist slash index.js because it's going to be um, right there, it doesn't create a disk folder. Okay, so then it's gonna run it like that. So come in over here, let's clear that. I'm gonna do npm, not npm, we're gonna build our image now. So docker image, docker build, and dash t, I'm gonna call it slack clone dash server, and dot because we're in this current file and I'm gonna hit enter. And we're gonna get an error when it does npm install because on my computer, current this Mac that I'm working on, I have Postgres installed uh, globally and so I didn't have to install the PG package. But uh, in Docker, I don't have any global things installed. So what we're gonna have to do is in our Slack clone server over here, so I'm just gonna start the install, npm install pg, uh, which is Postgres. So we'll see the, the error pop up over here. Well, actually no, this will build okay, but when I start the server, we're gonna get an error, um, which I'll show you guys in that in a second, uh, when this finishes installing stuff. Um, and when we do make uh, what we'll do is since we just made a change to our package.json, we'll need to uh, run docker build on our server again to rebuild the image and then to uh, run the container. And we're actually going to be having uh, another problem after we do this. And that's because our server doesn't just run node or it does run express but it also needs to connect to a Postgres SQL database and a Redis uh, server now because we are using that for PubSub. And Docker containers are don't have access to my Mac's local host. So right now, if we take a look, so how we're doing PubSub, take a look at this. Notice how I'm connecting to this host in this port here. Well, inside the Docker container where this is going to be running, this is pointing to basically that inside of the container. Um, and inside the container, we're not running a Redis instance, at least not right now. So it's going to be uh, an error for that 
because I have Redis running on my Mac, not that. Okay, all these errors uh, I think are fine. They're just installing bcrypt and different things are happening. Um, cool. So let's, I wanna make sure, yep, looks like pg installed over here, okay. But our container that we have here does not have pg yet. So when I do docker run, oops, run, and we're gonna use this command and we don't need net. So I'm gonna do docker run dash p. I'm not gonna run in the background because we're gonna get an error and I wanna show you guys that. Um, and I'm binding it to port 8081 and uh, 8081 over here uh, is coming from our index.js which it's running on. So let's run that. So now this is gonna start up our server and you'll notice how it says please install pg module manually. All right, so we just installed that. So we're gonna have to rebuild now uh, and then it'll be good. Now you'll notice now that we run this build again and I had run this before so I don't know if you saw but some of the stuff is getting cached. So I wanna show you guys the output of this uh, when we get to that point. But when you run successive uh, builds, notice how it goes through those pretty quickly. It's gonna to have to run the npm install here again because um, basically something has changed in our package.json. But see how it says using cache um, for that? It was able to just grab it from the cache and didn't have to rebuild it, which is really nice. And if we don't make any changes to our package.json and we just make a change somewhere else, um, it can uh, interpret it. Also, I forgot to mention if Docker is, if you've never used Docker before and this is looking quite foreign, I did do a hello world with Docker with Express um, that I recommend taking a look at uh, where I just did a simple Express server from start and you can just get it working right away. And uh, I'll put a link in the description below with that. Okay, so it looks like we're getting close with our NPM uh, running here. All right, we got all our packages done in uh, just about a minute here. And once we have this, we're gonna start up the server and it's gonna crash because it can't connect to Redis. So here we go. Start our server. And you'll notice we just keep trying to connect and it's gonna go on forever. And this is gonna hang your terminal window. So be careful with that. So I'm gonna come over here in my other terminal window and just uh, type docker container. And we, oops, container, docker container. Oops, I meant to say ls. I was wondering why I wasn't seeing this output. I thought I was spelling it wrong. I was just typing the wrong command. Okay, so this is the container that is running currently that is just infinitely going to connect. And I'm gonna copy the container's ID and just say container, oops, docker, docker container stop. And then the ID, of the container and then what will happen here is after a little bit this will stop uh, so that's how you can stop this from going infinitely and that's where we're going to end uh, this video so here you can see I got my prompt back and what we're going to be doing next is getting this uh, set up with Postgres and Redis so our server doesn't crash infinitely trying to connect to them so that's it for this video guys thanks for